What's up? Ho, ho, ho. Social Claus here. I guess we were that last week. Merry Christmas to you and yours. Happy holidays. It's Brian Social, my main man, Rob. We're here yet again to talk about everything under the sun today. We're going to talk about Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship Thailand. We're going to talk about Game Bread 3. Some weird stuff happening in the main event there. Sure and we also have all the rest of the winners we're going to talk to from the BKFC Awards, including Joe Riggs with Knockout of the Year. He's going to come on. We'll talk to him. We have Britton Beltron coming on, Female Fighter of the Year. And we also, where's Britton Hart? We have to ask her that. I don't even know. Yeah, let's Which, get through is, that. Is the hyphen there? <laughs> I want to call her Britton Hart because that's how she made her name, right? Yeah, I think this should be a transition period. All right, we'll see what happens. And then also, uh, other than that, we have the fight of the year, which was Sharice Sagala and Taylor Starling. They're going to be on, too. And I think they're going to be on together, which would be cool because we can get both their perspectives in that fight. It was a heck of a year for BKFC, and we're proud to be here. We're proud you're here with us. Uh, we're also live on the app for the first time mm-hmm. ever. So if you're watching on the app, hello. Uh, now, on the app, you're not going to see the chat. You're going to see that on YouTube. So when we refer to the chat... Just know that that's on YouTube, and don't get too bent out of shape about it. Just enjoy it on the app. Let's talk about a lot of great stuff, Rob. First of all, how are you? I'm great. How you doing, brother? I'm phenomenal. I'm a little stressed out. Holiday shopping, not done yet. Is I was going to say, did you finish? No, man. I, I, I barely started. I wait till last minute. And I can't buy online either, because when you buy online, I don't know what I want. I like to go out and like see, and it has to like kind of, oh, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. It's called pressure shopping. Last minute, it's a lot more fun. It's easier. <laughs> That's what I do. And uh, the thing is, when I was out, I did do a little shopping the other day before we get to this, and, and, and I heard get? people talking about eggnog. Got I eggnog? actually think, no, I think it's gross. I hate it. It looks disgusting. Mm-hmm. It, 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 the eggnog sounds disgusting. Do you like eggnog? Uh, no. No, I don't. I just drink alcohol, man. I don't need any fillers. You take the nog out. You drink the whiskey. <laughs> Life's tough enough. Evan, do you drink eggnog? You an eggnog guy? He looks like an eggnog guy. I think he would be. Uh, I think I've had it. Um, I don't remember if I liked it or not, though. I don't. I, we I should just, have DC run out and grab it for us while we're here. We could do that. We'll do DC. shots of eggnog. Oh, God, it's so gross. Yeah. In the chat, if you are in the chat, do you like eggnog? Nog or not? Just say yeah. nog or not. I say not all day. I won't touch it. It's disgusting. I don't know how it even sells. All right, let's get some fighting news. When I drink eggnog, it fights with my stomach. That's what it does. Uh-huh. Um, BKFC Thailand. In my estimation, great event. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, I just think the production was on point. I enjoyed watching it. And come on. When you go to Thailand, you know you're getting some of the best of the best fighters. Absolutely, man. So, it was an exciting card. I thought so, too. I mean, in your estimation, you thought it was really good. Um, we talked about this before we went on the air. Mm-hmm. And one of the things, other than the production I wanted to talk about, was Chris Lieben. Chris Lieben, uh, first time I've heard him for BKFC on commentary. Mm-hmm. I think he did a bang-up job. He's excellent. Um, I'm a big fan of Chris Lytle as well. It's nice to hear the fighters that you respect so much giving you the inside scoop. And I think those two do it the best I've heard in a long time. I agree. I agree. I'd like to hear a third panel. I love how HBO used to do it. And yeah. I actually, they had probably like three or four different, you know, yeah. color commentary or total panelists throughout. You yeah, know, they kind of given their melt in and out. Exactly. Yeah, it was cool how they did it. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing that too. Yeah. Um, but let's talk about the commentary team. <laughs> we love Sean Wheelock. Uh, I think he's, and I'm not just saying this I work with him. Mm-hmm. He, he's a pro. He's the best in the game, I think. I'm very proud that we have him here. But one of the things, I thank God every day of my life that I'm not Sean Wheelock. And I, I mean, for his his professionalism, I, I wish I was him, but I wouldn't want to be in that position. Here he is doing BKFC Thailand. And it's not like Bobby Jones or Billy Smith. It's these names that are insane. And he nails every pronunciation dude, of them. Difficulty 10 out of 10. Bro. It, <laughs> 25. Yeah, Poor it, dude, it, it man. It's bad. I get one name that I have to remember before I do an interview like that's hard and I repeat it in my head and I still get nervous. He's rattling off all these names. Mm-hmm. I think the producers put together the <laughs> like a highlight of the tale of tapes okay. with all the hard names. Do you have that, guys? Yeah, it's up. Let's, let's watch that. Samyong War versus Surachak Srirod, Surasak Siang Suek Sukamcha versus Ermek Kumachayev, Sarun Sriumbu versus Peapot Mike, that is Arash Mardani versus Zelham Mukushev, Sawaluk Narapong Sri versus Suri Manfredi, Rezad Amatnejad versus Thoet Sak Sinam, Pongpasan Chungyong versus Victor Booty, Victor Booty, Musam <laughs> Sinsamut Klin Mee versus Johnny. Hello, Reza Gadari versus Siri Mankan Lamthuan. Siri Mankan Lanchuan. I, I, I can't even, like, I was trying to be funny and he remember a name. He I can't is even, awesome, man. He said he those awesome. names. Think how good he is. Yeah. He said those names, and when he moved on to the next one, I had already forgotten how to say the name, and he's just... Where yeah. does booty come from? What uh, What's yeah, that well, country of origin? I know where booty, booty comes uh, from. Late pirate, night. The pirate, the country of pirates? No, it comes from late nights at the bar sometimes. You had too much to drink, a little bit of booty. That's all I'm saying. Oh, man. From Be the honest. UK. Is that a common uh, English surname? 
I, I believe it is. Let's throw it to the chat if you're on YouTube. I, I know that, uh, like I said, in the app, you're not if, seeing it. If you it, had but. to go to one country to find booty, where would you go? <laughs> Where's the who country knows, to find booty Who knows we had in? booty available on the BKFC <laughs> yeah. apps? Only four ninety nine a month, bkfc.com. Let's not joke about it anymore because, honestly, it was a great night it of was. fights. Absolutely. Rob, uh, was there anything that stood out for you? What actually stood out was a lot of them went the distance, mm -hmm. right? And I think the strike, I was waiting for someone to inadvertently throw a knee or an elbow or a clench and it didn't happen um i i enjoyed it i i was really taken back i'm like wow this is this is some quality quality content especially from you know coming out of the blue it's very difficult to put fights together a lot of countries are still in lockdown thailand is one of them they have to social distance still um and i think they did a phenomenal job big shout out to nick chapman for spearheading that that, that project, man. Yeah, he shout did a out to wonderful him. job. It was incredible. And, and looking uh, forward to the next one. Me too. But aside from just you know, since we're doing more in Thailand now, aside from mm -hmm. just the shows and stuff, another thing I saw on the app, I think it's on the website as well, and I, I think they did a great job with it. It's a little bit of a different flavor, but it's the BKFC tryouts from Thailand. Mm -hmm. So if you hop on there, I mean, over the holidays, you're looking for something to do, some time to kill. You love your family, but you know, you want to shut the door and be left alone for a little while, turn on the BKFC app and you can watch the Thailand trials. I think they were very well done. I enjoyed watching them. So check that out as well. And I, and I heard that they're actually trying to bring in more European fighters to Thailand because it's easier mm -hmm. um the time difference isn't as extreme from america to europe so those watching uh the live thailand shows can actually catch it the europeans can catch that a little bit easier it's a good idea apparently we have some uh, huge fans in in, in europe oh, too man. so yeah. from what i'm seeing and we get packages like to the office from europe from russia and they said what then one guy sent shoes or something they were like <laughs> i don't know shoes they were real, like real expensive shoes with the bare knuckle logo on them as we watch some of the action here from bkfc thailand you can see what we're talking about i mean ring out i mean the squared circle it's it looks it's crazy wonderful. to see. Yeah, it looks they, great. They built, so that's not they built a whole new one there. We didn't fly ours out. Yeah, that's what I yeah. heard of. I, I did hear that, and I, and I know it's not, but it seems. And maybe you can speak this. Your production guy. It, it just seems it's not, but it seems bigger. Is that the lighting or something? It seems bigger, but it looks like uh, they have a white canvas on there. We normally do like a gray, yeah, um, darker canvas. Yeah. yeah, is that that's white, right? Yeah, Dave? yeah. That's actually a cream color. It's not really. It's great. more of a cream. There's, there's it's an a, eggnog color. We're actually, we always debate on what color we should make the canvas, <laughs> yeah. and there's different reasons why. I like a nice gray because the light hits it differently than if, you know a white wood or a black canvas wood. Yeah, I think it also has something to do with the fact there's no um, like ads on the ropes or the corner pads or anything that make it a little. Thicker. Maybe that's yeah. yeah I'm not, you're right because you see the clean on the white mm -hmm. ropes. That's why it's yeah. looking different too. Um, I, I think it's interesting that we even uh, have a ring, a special ring built over there, which tells you we will be doing more in Thailand. I guess that's how it's going to work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it costs too much to send rings over there. I know that uh, guys I used to work with in other combat sports, they'd send a ring somewhere, and sometimes it costs so much to fly it, they would just leave it there. Well, you, should, you probably put on a boat. I don't think you can fly. Well, not fly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, get it there. You know what I'm saying? Put me on the boat. I'll, I'll sail that thing sail over there, man. There. I'm not flying. I want to go like, there though. If you got a, I mean, it's going to be a military friggin' C-130 or something. Yeah, how could you even do that? I don't know. Anyway, great event. Yep. Uh, proud that we're in Thailand. Can't wait to see more of it and do more of it. We're looking forward to that. And then we move on. Um, Game Bread. Game, Game Bread Fight Club 3. The third mm -hmm. one. Uh, I did not see the whole show. I saw part of the show. And I know we were talking about some of the controversy throughout the show. Um, the refing. Especially in the main event. I, I'd say mainly in the main event. Uh, you want to speak on that a little bit, Rob? I mean, I, I'll tell you the main event. Well, was, I don't know how many people. I don't know how many people watched it. I love for us to, if we can, pull it up. watch it together. Let that, the fans watch it. That, you and so I watch we can it. Then figure out, and then happened. let's all sit down and let's argue after the I fact. I think I think they have it up or there. Agree. But if you're as they're getting ready to put it up, I'll tell you it was uh, Spartan Alex Nicholson versus mm -hmm. Tony Lopez. We've seen Tony fight for us before. Alex has been at many events. I wouldn't doubt we don't see Alex in BKFC one day. I'd like to. Um, but I, I thought it was shaping up to be, I said last week with Dave on the podcast that Tony Lopez was the guy that I interviewed. Didn't even mm -hmm. remember the name of the guy he was fighting. He just wanted to fight. We know Tony Lopez is tough and tough I've seen Alex nails. and Alex Spartan's a young guy. He's really tough too. And this guy's oh, he's got power. Yeah. Man. A lot of power. Scary power. So I was excited to see what would happen. And then we saw, uh, what some are calling bad decisions from the ref. We're gonna let you judge for yourself here in a minute. The other thing I saw as we're waiting for this video was that mm -hmm. this has nothing to do with fighting, but I just thought it was interesting. I think I saw on social media that after the fight, maybe for the holidays, he wanted to clean it up. Alex Nicholson took off that big beard. Really? He looks like he's 10 years old now. Completely different guy. I wouldn't even Gone? know. Yeah, I think. Unless I was scrolling too fast, yeah, I missed gonna, it. We're going to roll the fight. We're going to roll the fight now. Let's check it out. Alex Nicholson, and it's just, I've been there, done that. He has fought some scary monsters in his time. 
Coming over to the top with the left hook. Against the right hand, kick inside. Different assignment for Nicholson than last time. Guys would fall out against him at last minute and he'll take whoever they got. Last time he had a shorter, stockier leg lock specialist and now he has a long rangey martial artist. Nice by the people. Tough to get inside that. Oh! That is what you get sometimes when you face Alex Nicholson, a big shot. It sounded like he had cracked a fastball over right. the fence. What? Uh, what are they doing? Here's serious, Rob. This is what we're talking about. It's like they're having a powwow. The ref just stopped the fight. What is going on? The ref on? just stopped the fight. No, no, yeah, I don't want to interrupt too much because the announcers are kind of speaking as to what I would say. What, what the hell was that? Wow. I came here to fight. I'm happy to fight some more. I'm not sure. Yeah, and he goes right back to that left hook. It sounded like he hit a fastball over the center field with that left hook on him. But yeah, Lopez was well alert. Ooh, right hand now. Now the left again. Yeah, I'm a little, still a little confused as to what exactly happened there. Big left by Alex, dropped him, and then there was the referee inter intervention. I think the ref was stopping the fight, thought better of it, and then... Oh, Hardy! Yikes! And the ref now is... Yeah, he was, he was face yeah. down. When you're face down wondering where you are, that's... Uh... Let him go again. Wow, Alex. Is he gonna get him? See, yeah. What? What? What transpired there? What? It didn't even look like he waved the fight off. He just put his hand up. It's like they were having like a power. They were all discussing if they were going to cancel the fight, stop it, or what was happening. I, I have it. never seen that before, man. Like, I. I've never seen it. If that, a fight intervenes, if a fight or if a ref, excuse me, intervenes and stops, Stop. that's it. The, you know, I don't know what, you know, Tony Lopez's corner or, you know, what, a, what happened? What, what, what? Yeah, I don't know either. I, I just, Come on, man, we got to do better than that. I, I think that. I've never seen that ref ref for us before. Or ref for, I didn't say us, BKFC. I, I've, of course, I've never seen ref for us, but I've never seen ref for Game Bread before. Game Bread's only had three events, so that's not saying much, but I, I don't know what happened there either. That's just downright confusing to the point where, like, if you're a professional fighter, you're ready for a lot of stuff, I, I would guess, in there. I mean, you're just go, go, go. Mm -hmm. But I also wonder if we're confused by that watching it back and watching it live – that has to confuse the fighters too and throw them off a little bit. Like if I was, I know you probably yeah, it sounded like Nixon, yeah, pissed. it sounded like Lopez was giving him some lip, like hey, I'm not out, I'm not knocked down, and no. he kind of protested, and the ref was like, okay, keep fighting then. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if that's really a thing, but hey, it's combat sports, it's a crazy world, mixed martial arts, bare knuckle. I mean, that's see, my thing is look. If we have anybody, like I know when I talk to Sean Wheelock sometimes off the air, like he understands refing for like every mm -hmm. combat sport he understands sure. why things are done so sometimes while i don't understand something he'll explain it. i'll go okay it makes sense so if anybody understands uh if you're on youtube watching this if you're not on the app right now if you're on youtube hop in the chat and tell us what you think why did the ref do that uh, what is is there a reasoning because i can't figure it out i'll give him the benefit of the doubt i want to know why because it doesn't make any sense to me yeah yeah you always but, want to give him the benefit of the doubt we're going a little hard I do, on I do him that i'd love much. to hear what his yeah <laughs> I do that too much hey man th th hey that's their job that's what they get paid for so if you mess up your know. job you get called out on it sometimes that's a good thing yeah. so you can actually do your job better i agree so uh other than that that was the big uh, i guess controversy we would call mm -hmm. it a game bread yeah uh the other thing came out of game bread that we both again we we're told we we're texting about this rob and i we thought this was interesting jorge uh he's he's there uh, coming off game bread successful event in his mm -hmm. eyes and in our eyes and next thing you see is jorge going on instagram and all his socials and just ripping up jake paul saying like please uh, you know it's not enough money for me to fight you five million is not enough uh i mean where are you at is that a fight you'd want to watch uh hmm well, I would kind of like to bring up the fact of what happened to get us down that road. So Tyrone Woodley to Jake oh. Paul. He knocks him out. Did he? He knocks him out. Did he? Question <laughs> yeah. Questionable. All right. So here's the conspiracies that are running around rampant. Number one, was it a true knockout? Number two, did was the fight fixed? Was there something in the claws? that he was required, him being Tyrone, to get knocked out or to not to not knock Jake Paul out. But that would come out. You'd think that would come out somehow. I don't know. I have no idea. I think I that have no idea. But that was... That I, 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 I watched that fight, and one of the first things, I was like, man, that's a pretty hard shot. I thought that too. One of the things 
that I look at and when I analyze, look at his, you know, shoulder didn't twitch. He did this very strange movement with his glove mm -hmm. where it was almost sure. like he, 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 it's not even that. It's not the oh, punch. Okay. It was the lead up to it. So you know, I think he threw a jab yeah. and it was the lead up to when he threw that hook that knocked him out. Uh -huh. And you see him with his wrist and he turns his wrist just so slightly, like almost like, like that, you know, to me, it's like, that was kind of weird. Why would, why would you do that? And he threw the same punch and knocked him out. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I know this. Yeah. There is no scenario in the world where him losing that fight. If Jake Paul would have lost that fight, his stock would have been on the ground. It dropped. His career would have been not over in the boxing world, but it would have been very, very tarnished. What did Woodley get for that fight? Do we know? I don't. I don't know how there's, much there's, he made has on he been it. Reported? I, know, I know he got a Rolex at weigh-ins. Well, I was going to say, he got it's a like, Rolex. Uh, a reporter got a Rolex asking Jake Paul a question. Hey, Jake Paul, BKFC, we love you, man. I'd love a couple of Rollies, you know? Yeah. Put some biscuits on my wrist. <laughs> Why not? I'm getting a Rolex from, uh, from Dave, I'm sure for Christmas, from Dave Feldman. That's what he's sending me. Yeah. I, <laughs> I would love to give a solid opinion on it. It looked like a very solid shot. I don't think the punch was faked. Oh, no. Uh, now the outcome to it could have been predetermined. So look, here's the thing. Tyrone Woodley, professional mm -hmm. fighter. If they say to me, I'm a pro fighter and I'm going to make a ton of money, maybe it's because I have no, um, no, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? No integrity. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I do mm -hmm. have integrity, but if they're offering me millions, I'm a pro fighter. I'm going to say, okay, I'll take a shot. I do it for this much money anyway, I'll take a shot in the face and fall. Well, you can put, you can write integrity on a check or you can write $5 million. <laughs> <What> is, <laughs> send that say? in, see one, see which one gets cashed first. They man. Used, that's right. They used to say uh, potential, don't buy groceries. Integrity, you would think you want to, I'm an mm -hmm. integraful, what's the word? Integ integrity, integraful, integral. What's the word you're looking for? Integral. You're a man of character. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's what I do when I can't <laughs> high spell morals something. And character. I just change it around when it doesn't make sense. Gentlemen, when I'm you're forgetting we have a man in the camp of uh, Jake Paul, our own Jake Yet, Boston. I was Going, mm -hmm. Thank you. I was going there next. Oh, I appreciate that, Evan. Uh, look, Evan, you're the man. Um, yeah, I saw that on social as well. He was helping spar with Jake mm -hmm. Paul. Uh, there's some pictures. Jake Boswick, who we've seen fight Julian Lane. I believe we saw him that six rounder with uh, Tyler Vogel, I too, back in the, uh, what, about a year ago? The first ever. Yeah, yeah first, first and only so far. So, Jake, I mean, Jake changed with who, Timberland. He's got all the guys, that, you know, training them boxing. Camp, yep. So, Jake is no joke. Jake's a tough guy. So, you're getting trained by guys like that. And quite frankly, there's been more on the BKFC roster I've spoken with uh, who have sparred with Jake Paul. And they all say that he hits hard. He's a real deal. And they're looking for him to see what he can do. So, mm -hmm. and I think it's also interesting to note, Rob, that last week you and I sat across from each other like two schmucks. And we said, <laughs> oh, we're not going to watch that one. We don't care about that one. And now what are we doing? We're talking about it because they knew how to get people oh, to talk yeah, about man. it. You had to have, you had to have done something Ultra exciting. There had to be some kind of, you know, grandioso ending to it because the lead up each round, it was pretty boring boxing match. It really was. So you needed to do something to really shock the There's combat. Highlight real knockout, girls. dude. Highlight and he's an out. entertainer. This is what they do. I wouldn't but it put it past if there was something squirrely in the mix. I, I, I don't know. Brother behind yeah, the scenes. but, you know, and then after that win, uh, he calls out everyone on the UFC roster. Jorge for $5 million. Jorge saying that's chump change. Well, he needs you, 20 What do you guys think Tyron would have done? Because they had a clause in the contract that if Tyron knocked him out, he would get half a million. So, like, what do you think? He See, paid I, him more than that to, to take a dive? Because that, that's quite an accusation. I don't think Tyron is the kind of person. To I'm not saying that he took a dive. I'm not saying that the punch was faked. All I know is it's better, better, better business if Jake Paul and Jake Paul's camp were Wins to win that fight in some type of, you know, super fashion. Because let's let's call it what it let's call it what it is. The first fight was exciting. Everybody tuned in. Now he's fighting a real boxer from the Fury camp. Tommy pulls out. He had an injury or sick. Whatever happened. That really hurts the main event. So that what do you do setup. now? I think that you know, was the setup. What do you do now? You I think, think that was, there was the setup? Here's what I think. Ooh, I think it's that... Deep. No, I do. Let's uh, go, chat. What do you think? I, Set up or I real? I think that... It, uh, maybe I'm wrong here, but I think business-wise, maybe they could have paid him. We're really reaching here, but I think mm -hmm. maybe they could have paid him and they said, look, we're going to put you in the fight, make him look legitimate. We're going to build it and then we're going to pull out and then we'll get Woodley in there for a, for a second uh, fight. And that's what they did. And that's what I think. If, if you had a guess, I think there's more of a setup with that, him pulling out. Because I think if he fights a real boxer like that, 
he doesn't have as much of a chance. And I think he knows that. I think he went, I think Jake's going to keep making money and leveling up, making money, making money until he's, he knows he's going to get knocked out at the end of the game. I think, mm -hmm. I, I mean, when he faces like someone who can knock him out, he's going to know. There's also, you know, you can bet on those fights. So that's true. Sure. You know, you can't really, I mean, what's, what am you I can't fix them. You can't. Yeah. Not, it's yeah. very illegal to fix fights, especially when, you know, there's odds made on them and stuff. Well, listen, when, when there's, wise, when, there's big, the when there's big, when there's, when there's big money being tossed around, rest assured, there's going to be some level of corruption trying to, you know, snake yeah. its way in, no matter what the industry is, no matter what the sport is. I don't know if that'll ever happen on the BKFC show. No corruption. Cause we don't have big money on this show. We're, we're, we're lucky. We have a wall and a monitor here, no right? Frills mm -hmm. here, baby. <laughs> it's no frills show. Yeah, I think SB, SB nation actually just put out an article yesterday, just kind of going through it. Was there a conspiracy? Was oh, they put Nazi? out a big yes. thing. Go, go check it out. Chat. Tell us what you think. Um, yeah, and if you're listening on the app again, brand new on the mm -hmm. app this time, we appreciate you. Also, we should touch on the fact that if you can't watch it or maybe you have to leave, we're on Spotify as the BKFC show. So you can listen to the audio as a podcast there. And it's very exciting because in a couple minutes, right around 1230, we have the female fighter of the year coming on. Awesome. Britton Hart is coming up. We're going to talk to her about some of her fights. Beltron, get it right. Well, we're going to find man. out. Maybe it's hard. Maybe it's just a hype. Is it Facebook? Is it Meta? We're going to figure it out today. <laughs> uh, that's coming up in a couple minutes around mm -hmm. 1230. I know we're waiting for her to call in. We also, to remind you, have um, we have Joe Riggs coming up, who's responsible uh, for the knockout of the year when he knocked out Melvin Gillard out of the ring. Knocked square right circle. out of the ring, man. And uh, also we have the fight of the year, Sagala versus Starling. We'll talk to both mm -hmm. of them as well coming up today. Um, let's talk about the fan awards. And I, and I okay. stress the fact that they are fan awards because mm -hmm. – Look, I'm always on social. I'm always reading everything you say. Even if we're not commenting, I'm always reading it. Mm -hmm. And I saw a lot of people claiming, where did these awards take place? No fans voted on these. This was rigged. These can't be the correct winners. And here's the funny thing. They don't know what we talk about off the air. Sure. And we sat here when we did those awards and we said, you know, some places, I worked in radio. They rig things. They do to make it go the way they want it. This isn't the dollar menu. That's 99 cents. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's, on, man. That, that stuff's rigged. But we sat here and we said, let's give it all to the fans, pure transparency. We put yeah. what polls up on YouTube, on Twitter. YouTube and Twitter. Facebook right. won't allow polls. Instagram's not the place for them. Correct. So we put them up there and people were complaining that we fixed these. We put the actual results up there. They're up there. You can go look there's, at them, right? There's no fixing. It's from accounts. <laughs> Unless you're going to create 3,000 YouTube channels to purposely... So anyone that can do that, big shout out. Yeah, Help man, us grow the you. channel. If you got, <laughs> Tell us what to do if you got an army of uh, fake fake bots out there, hook us up, man. Let's get some more subscriptions. I just think it's really important to, to, to say that we, we were actually trying to be transparent. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the internet, though. Anything you do is going to get questioned. Yeah. Anything you do is going to question, but again, I, I, I don't like giving that much credence to trolls. To be completely honest with you, man, it's just it's, it's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. What to the fans? No, no, it's trolls. Oh, trolls! trolls. No, 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 no. Because you know anybody that knows anything about polling or Twitter or even any social media channels, you click a button, it's there. It yeah. tells you who's who voted for what. The percentages are there. If anybody knows about polls, is my man Rob. You know, you you do them and you do a great job with them. We appreciate that. Um, I do know that I have to cut you off because okay. we have the female fighter of the year in the virtual green room here live on satellite five. I am proud to present. Now I'm sweating because I don't know what to call her. I'm going to call her Britain Hart because that's how I know you. I but hope she punches you up. Oh, her it husband. Could be. Oh, no, it's Britain Beltran. I see him in the like background. That. I see him. I swear it's Britain Beltran. Yeah. Oh, yes, it is. Britain Hart Beltran. Big shout out, Joey Beltran. Merry, Merry Christmas to you too, Joey. <laughs> You're number one in my book also. Uh, how are you guys doing? How's life? Good. Hey, guys. And yeah, I mean, I, I know a lot of people realize, you know, that I'm Britain Hart and, and that they knew me like that. So it, it's not anything offensive. But, you know, me and Joey are, are married and definitely making those level changes to to establish a new and a, and a better fighter being with Beltron. So it doesn't, you know, like I said, it doesn't hurt my feelings or his feelings. We know what it is in the fight game. Right. So no hard feelings. Just getting used to it. Just getting used but to yeah, the new So, I mean, really... I guess we're going to say, you know, a female fighter of the year. Let's That's right. go. That's right. Absolutely. Talk about those poll stats. I heard you guys talking about it. And I mean, wow. I mean, it's just a good inspiration. And I think like uh, a message to everybody that followers mean jack shit because look at Misfit with her 95,000 bot followers. Look at Rachel. Look at Taylor. Look at all their fans and warriors that are out there last in their name all over the internet but when it comes to voting look at little old britain from virginia hanging out on the cows and doing whatever 
only has 40,000 followers. She ain't shit. But 54% voted right. for me to be female fire of the year. And that says it. You should be proud of that. I can tell you are. Uh, and and congr- I am. You should be. Congratulations. You, you fought your heart out. And I want to talk about some of your fights. But before we do that, I have to mention it. I've seen you on socials. I'm seeing you for the first time. You changed the hair color. You went blonde. Why? Yeah, Why was well, that? it's. It's crazy because I've been blonde my whole life. So if you look back years and years ago, I was always blonde. I actually only changed my hair color to brown because I was training. Um, you know, I was out, I was living out of my car. I was going through some like major ups and downs and doing my hair was like the last thing on my list. Mm-hmm. So I didn't, I had to like not get my hair done for a couple of years and having it brown was just easier. That way I could be in the gym. I could train my ass off and I could do everything. So now thankfully that, you know, I fought my ass off and fought four times in a year. Now I have a little break and I was like, let me catch up on some of this, um, you know, girl stuff that, that we girls do do to make ourselves <laughs> mm-hmm. feel good and better. And, you know, that's all important. But I'm, I'm super happy to be back blonde because I think you guys all saw it when I fought Beck, yeah. and, um, you know, when I fought Paige. And I kind of wanted to bring that Britain back because I think people kind of have the gist of a bad attitude or disrespectful or whatever. So maybe, I don't know. The blonde hair is always like get free passes on being extra. Nice. <laughs> Breath of fresh air. Let's talk about your fights uh, since you are female fighter of the year. I just want to kind of go through them quickly. What a year you've had. Uh, I want to start with knuckle mania, of course, over Paige Van Zandt. Um, you know, when you came into that fight, the one thing I, and always, but the one thing I really noticed going into that fight is you seem to really pride yourself into being almost the defender of bare knuckle fighting championship, the grinders like yourself, not these people that are coming in that some fighters, you know, fans, whoever get annoyed about. You seem to, be, to take that right on and say, I'm going to be the defender of bare knuckle fighting championship. And it seemed to really go well for you. Talk about that. Yeah. And I mean, I really, I really believe that. And so you can kind of see the progression on the fights after that on, on what it was like when Britain really believed that to, to now. So anyways, it kind of, I talk about it all the time. When I started BKFC, you know, I really started BKFC with the dream and the vision that was, was sold to me that this is a place for real fighters. This is a place for fighters to show who they are and that, you know, maybe the UFC didn't give them the chance they deserve. Maybe Bellator didn't give them the chance they deserve. Maybe boxing didn't give them the chance they deserve. And bare knuckle is to show the grittiest, toughest, most heart that you can have for this league of fighters. And I feel like I'm that. And that these people coming in from UFC or these people that are like not devoting their life to, to fighting and maybe they got washed out, not because of their skills, but because they, their motives and their lifestyle was pointing a different way than, than being a fighter. And I felt like this was my chance to show that I can be one of the most famous, uh, most talked about, highly followed female combat, you know, superstar. And that I could do that under the will and power that BKFC hosts the fighters that give their life to fighting. You know? Yeah, you definitely you definitely accomplished that. And I'm going to give our production um, time to set this up as I'm talking to you. I think they'll know what I'm thinking. In honor of that fight, you had a very, 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 very talked about uh, line that you yelled into my microphone after that fight. Uh, production, do we have it? I'm a fucking feeling. And I think that's so true. You were a feeling for all these people, for all these people that, you know, were behind you. So that was cool to see in the first fight. Let's move to your second fight. Let's move to your second fight uh, against Jenny Savage. Another great fight. You guys didn't seem to be getting along too well before it. Uh, I think Fight, Fight TV was saying that uh, Britain is relentless, they said on social during that fight. That's how they described you. And from what I could see is you just seemed to overwhelm Jenny in like the third round with punches. Uh, Talk a little bit about that fight, where your headspace was going in. You know you're coming off the Paige Van Zandt fight, and you're trying to be the next version of yourself. You're getting better. How did you feel with that fight uh, when you came out of it? Yeah, I felt like that fight was really, she was a shorter fighter and I could have, you know, did the range thing and out jabbed her like I did with Randine and just jabbed her to death and blew her forehead up. But we really were working on showing that um, I've perfected the clinch and the inside fighting. And it doesn't matter if you're shorter, taller, you know, whatever it is that my clinch was really good and that I could 
also go to the body really good because I think a lot of people were like, Britain doesn't go to the body if efficiently or effective enough. And if you had more body shots, so, you know, to get body shots, you can't throw body shots out of range. You have to be kind of more inside range and closer range to land the body shots in a safer way. So I felt like I really worked on that in camp. And then with Jimmy Savage, it was just so personal you know, that wasn't, you know, with Paige, it really wasn't personal. It was just, I knew she, I could do it. And she was thinking she could do it. And so there you got the, the, I want to almost say a respectful competition. Like, of course, we're going to say each other is better or whatever, yeah. but you know, with Jenny Savage, that was personal. Like she went on social media and said lies and, and started some mm-hmm. stuff. And she's just still to this day, if you're listening, you're fucking crazy because you message me and say good luck and I'm cheering for you. And then other people screenshot that she's talking and still talk shit about me. So I just don't play those games. And I think you guys saw that you saw the skill of the clinch and the body work, but you also saw the personal vendetta and, and you know, you don't get in my head rent rent free. And people say that like that. Oh, that Britain's, um, they got under Britain's skin or they're in Britain's head, but really that's the worst place you can be because then I stop overthinking the moves. Like, Hey, I need a double jab. The films I'm just going and my, my instinct takes over. So I think that that fight worked out so well for me because my instinct kind of like overran me in the fact of, I just wanted to beat her and make sure that it was like no judges whatsoever. No. Yeah, and that's what you did. Uh, I was actually going to ask you my next question, but I don't need to. You answered it. I was going to ask you if you guys have uh, kind of mended fences. Sounds like you haven't. Okay, let's move on. Another fight that uh, seemed like got kind of personal uh, with Pearl Gonzalez was the last one we saw you in. Of course, during that fight, um, unanimous decision, uh, and apparently Pearl says she's never going to fight BKFC again. She's done with it. Uh, I was reading about this. So during that fight... Did you retire her? That's what I was going to ask you. Thank you. Uh, Hell yeah, I better have retired her. I mean, you can't take that statement back. I mean, I mean, she was, look, hey, I, we're on this podcast. I'm going to own up to it. You know, I really don't want to, but look, she's a great fighter. She really is. Um, actually, surprisingly, probably the best on the BKFC roster beside me, in my opinion. And I had no idea. And that was my, you know, I, that was my ignorance and you know, the Savage fight, I was on cloud nine and I watched her fight and it did look like she was an easy fight. And, you know, we're looking at it from the perspective of, hey, Pearl Gonzalez is supposed to be tough and whatever, almighty. And you were expecting to see her banging out, but she really was controlling the range and controlling the distance. And a lot of times as fans, we forget to look at the skill and the poise and uh, posture really took for her to do that. And, and be untouched with um, Teresa Sagala and, you know, to win every round. So so to me, it did seem like an easy fight. And so I said it. So I had to eat my words and I did. I took the fight on a three week notice because I was thinking, well, damn, I already said she was an easy fight. So if I say I need a proper six week notice, I, I you know, would be kind of not being impeccable with my word on her being an easy fight. But you know, she, she was really good and, um, bigger than I thought. I thought I would have the the reach advantage on her. I mean, all those, all those things that came into play that, you know, I wish I would have been better prepared on, but Hey, you know, look at that going into that fight. And again, making it personal, you know, I was at, you know, 135, So I was cutting weight. The press yeah. conference went freaking horrible. And I mean, if you don't know me, you know me now, I don't say, Sometimes I just don't say the smartest things. You know, I, I have a lot of shit going in my head like everybody. And especially when you're just off the plane and going through even a 10 pound weight cut is still, you know, I didn't drink anything all day and I kind of let it get the, not the great side of me. But when I went in that fight again, instinct just takes over because now I'm pissed at you and mad at you. And, you know, I felt like I watched the, the film over again and you can't really see, so I kind of sound crazy saying it, but that fight was a lot more personal than what watching it on the film. Like, you just had to be in the ring with me and Pearl and see, like, the looks we were giving each other and how we were fighting each other. 
and it was definitely a really personal fight. So oh, yeah. at the end, it was a real fight. you know, it sure was. what, how it happened, it happened, how it did. And I don't apologize for that whatsoever. And I think if you guys were in my shoes, you would see it from my point of view. And, you know, to see her quit like that and, and to get out and say that was her last bare knuckle. I mean, gosh, you're talking about even better than winning, you know, even better than winning is retiring someone and retiring someone that's that good, you know, cause she is, um, she is a really good fighter. Uh, it feels extra good. So I'm definitely more a victory all day over that. Of course, Britton Hart, the defender of bare knuckle. I love that. Uh, so Britton, uh, as we look at three of these fights and they all were very important to your BKFC career in my estimation for different reasoning, right? For different reasons. Uh, I, I look back, I believe it was, yeah, Knuckle Mania one, Knuckle Mania, the first one when you fought Taylor heading into that. We should also mention you got married like uh what, uh day before the fight with Joey? Yeah, I was I got married on the twenty first and fought on the twenty third. That's awesome. So so you had that whole special couple days and the special win for you as a fighter, you know, everything coming together for you. And then you look at Jenny Savage, you kind of defended how you felt and, and you showed the world you leveled up again, you know, your fighting style got better and Pearl Gonzalez did a great job and you retired her. So of these three fights, it might be a hard question for you to pick, but you are the female fighter of the year. So you're the one to ask which one of those fights was the most special to you. It doesn't have to be the one that meant the most to the fans. You personally, what was the most special to you and why? What did the most for you? Ah, man. Um, you know, definitely not the per Pearl Gonzalez fight. It, you know, I wish it had more build up because I feel like she's probably the best person, the hardest person that I beat, but I don't really care about that fight. But, um, and then Jenny Savage is just like, uh, you know, it's Jenny Savage, but my wedding was really cool. So yeah, I'll say it was the, yeah, it was a knuckle mania fight. Um, I went in there with some crazy things happening. I don't need to get into, but some crazy ass shit happened to me um, last Christmas. Um, and I was going through something really bad then. So I had to go out to California and I met Coach Haas. And man, him and Luck together, I mean, two heroes. And, and Joey helped me as a friend in that point. He was a very very important friend that helped me in that fight um but i really got to find out a lot more about myself in in that fight camp and it's probably the best most confident version of myself that i've ever been so going out there and you know even though i said i'm a fucking feeling and everyone wants to throw that in my face i mean that's great i am and i told people that they were gonna feel it and i've shown that like i've lived up to that moment like that was me crazy wild unpredictable but damn i'm a fucking feeling and i'm so glad that i got to do it on the main event and again somebody so you know, influential as Paige Van Sant. You know, look, she lost two fights and everybody still worships and loves her. So it's pretty cool. Uh, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget that moment. And really, I could say it was life changing. It really was. Hey, Britton, give yourself some credit too. While you're saying people worship and love Paige Van Zandt, I know there's a lot of bare knuckle fans that, that really, like I said, feel that you're almost the defender of bare knuckle. And there's a lot of people on your side too. And that's why you're female fighter of the year. And don't rip on the feeling thing. I mean, that was huge for you. You had t-shirts made. You made money off that. It was wonderful. And and you are, after getting to know you, you are a feeling. You're fighting for people that can't fight. And, and you have so much passion in you. And it's fun to watch you fight. We're looking forward to your next fight. Where are you going this next year? I, I can already answer, but I'm gonna let you answer. What do you think you're going? Well, <laughs> I definitely want to be getting um, strapped up. Yep. So I'm excited. Big shout out to WBK. Um, see for the for that for their for their ch champion. So we have a WBC. WBKC belt coming out. So that's exciting. Yeah, I, I, so, so, I'm, so I'm that's awesome. But as far as title belts within BKFC in this promotion, the ones that are really important, um, where are you at with that? I mean, what fight are you looking for? What, where are you headed? Come on, man. All right, Britton, you, you only, Britton, you only have two blemishes 
on your record from two very experienced fighters. You can only pick one. There you go. Who Man, would you like to fight in 2022? Job, Forget Rob. those blemishes. One of those blemishes was a split decision. So Absolutely. you know your ass lost. So fuck that girl. And then the other one was a doctor stoppage. Get out of here. If you, you had to, if you had so. to, if you had to run it back, which one would you like to face first? <laughs> Well, you know, honestly, just because she gets on my damn nerves, I'd love to run Misfit back. So any day, sweetheart, any Oof. day. Actually, it's just people don't want to see you is why they haven't made that fight. Don't say I'm running. Don't say I talk. Don't say I'm ratchet. Don't say any of that because you're hearing it right now. I've been asking to fight you because I'm sick of your mouth and your fucking flip flop shit all over the internet that you're going to be bored in training camp. And then, oh my gosh, you guys, hashtag heart versus misfit too. Let's go. Let's go. So, you know what? You're the one who needs to make up your mind. I'm ready. I've been ready. Uh, so I would love to fight her and, you know, shut her mouth up. I definitely want to fight Beck, but Beck's in Australia. And you know what? Beck's staying in her lane, in my opinion, you know, because she hasn't been fighting. And I think that that's really smart and respectful of her. You know, I don't see her running her mouth because there's not really much she can do. She's in Australia. She's in a different situation. But I think Misfit going back and forth on some shit, you know, obviously gets annoying. So uh, any day ready on that. Like I said, just for some reason, just her minions want to see her fight. Right, you know, I'm I think that's one. a I think I that's a fight it. that needs to get done. I want to see it. I'd like to see that hey, Rob, fight again. I, I want to take a second and thank Rob because I was kind of setting the table for you to answer like that. Rob pushed it right and he said, "Answer one of these now." Good job, Rob. Hey, that was, I, don't that, leave me hanging, Rob. Absolutely, brother. It's just what what the fans want. They want to see competitive matches. <laughs> Both of those fights of yours, you narrowly lost for just like you said, a five round war, doctor stoppage. I think either a, one of those fights would be an amazing also, runback. Also, Rob, and Britain would agree, mm -hmm. it's a different Britain heart this time oh, sure. around. Like you Absolutely. said, Britain, you've leveled up. So I think the maturity as a fighter and, and, and your brain as a fighter has changed so much since then. I want to see how you would fare this time when we saw, like you said, the, and you were saying too, Britain, the different stoppages. I'd love to see those fights. Very competitive, fun fights. I'm hoping we do. I really am. For sure. You know, I think that I have. I've come a long way, and I think I know exactly what it takes um, to beat her and I'm super confident in that and um, to be honest with you I think she is too so I think that's why she wants that fight so I think she wants her way out so she can be you know humble and at the end of the day she's pretty she's she can act gracious in defeat and that'd be cool to see yeah, it would be and and before we let you go here we have uh, to tease coming up in a couple minutes we had fight of the year which was Sagala versus Starling it opened up knuckle mania um, your thoughts on Sagala Starling as far as that fight, how it made a fight of the year. Is that something you agree with as a, as a fan? Is it something you agree with? I mean, congratulations to both of them. It was definitely uh, a hell of a fight. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to. I'm happy for them. Good. Uh, I really, there's a lot of great fights, honestly. And it just seems to be that fights that are more bloody and gory and kind of going back and forth, those definitely are the fights that fans want to see. So, you know, I can't say I, I don't see that. I disagree with it. Uh, and I'm, you know, Taylor's uh, three and zero now. And yep. even, you know, shout out to Sagala. You know, I used to not really think the greatest things about her, but she didn't quit and she hung in there and she just had her win now. So she's, you know, turned it around. So that was really cool and exciting to see. So I think that it is a deserving thing since the, both ladies have, you know, they've been in BKFC. They've not fought once, but three times and are still giving it their heart and they're all and they're not stopping and that's really commendable so yeah i think well deserved for sure i agree i think it's uh it's gonna be fun to talk to both them on split screen that's coming up around one o'clock but Britain, i know you have things to do and and i know uh you know tell joey we said hello as well i want to wish you and your family and all your fans a very merry christmas I hope you enjoy the holiday season congratulations female <laughs> fighter of the year yeah. i know how, i know how much guys. that means congratulations to you. And more so, thank you again. Thank you to the people. Yep. 
you know, sometimes we hashtag that people's share. Man, I'm here for you guys. So really, it, congratulations to me. But man, I could not do it without them. So the real ones, the people that know, uh, everything I do is for definitely for you and, and making sure that we can make the world a better place and, and a place that you want to control and that you're in control of. Well, Britton, thank you very thank much. You. And uh, we appreciate you. We appreciate you watching some awesome fights. Can't wait to see what's in store for you in 2022. Uh, it, it's just fun watching you level up as a fighter. So I hope to see more of that. Thanks for coming on today. Yep, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Ho, ho, ho! That sounds like the title fight to make, yeah, gentlemen. I agree. Oh, it is. I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> now she said, I knew she probably wanted that, either but I want I, yeah, I want both of those I, I fights. Want I, want, I want both of them. Back, back I, rematch, yeah. Either one. I'm 50-50. And again, she went a five-round war, her first fight, Beck's yeah. first fight. Yeah. Great fight That's all around. Go watch fight. it. It's on our channel. It's on the app. Go watch it now. BKFC.com. Grab mm -hmm. the app. Watch it there, which we're also live on the app for the first time ever, too. This is exciting with the podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can catch us live on the app. You can watch on YouTube and comment along and join the show that way. And also, uh, if you missed the show, we're on Spotify. Spotify, audio only, like podcasting as the BKFC show. As we said, coming up in a couple minutes, we're going to talk to the fight of the year, Sagala Starling. Uh, there's reasoning for the fight of the year. Um, the fans picked it. You picked it. So we'll get into that in a couple minutes. Um, I think, once again, Britton Hart, female fighter of the year. Britton Hart, once again, I'm going to say it. Once again, female fighter of the year. Congratulations, Britton Hart. Someone who's worked so hard since Three I started no. here at Bare Knuckle. Amazing. Three no. and they're Amazing. Not, this. Just they're not 2021. slouches. It's not slouches. It's, it's did fighters. she have did she have the hardest fight schedule she 2021? May have. I mean, she may have. You have these elite fighters, all of them bare knuckle, but mm -hmm. you also have elite fighters coming in. Now, uh, when Paige came in, how do you prepare? We hadn't seen a ton of UFC. I don't think we at that point, I mean, we saw some, but in, in that capacity, in a main event like that, as she's defending Paige bare had knuckle. A, Paige had a lot of resources going into oh, yeah. a lot of different trainers, and she came in. She looked great. She did. Great fight, but... You know, As we both said, we thought she figured it out in the fourth mm -hmm. round, but then uh, we figured when she went to go fight Paige, when she went to go fight the next fight, she may have figured it out, and we saw what happened in that fight. Paige is tough. The people that want to rip on Paige, they can rip on her all day long, but what we've seen is she's a tough customer when she comes to fight. She comes to fight. So that's a huge fight for uh, Britain to win. For Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, the organization, you know, to represent... You could have someone from UFC come in and just run over. She didn't mm -hmm. allow that to happen. So thank you for that, Britain. And then, like we said, the Jenny Savage fight. Jenny's been around. Jenny just got a win. She needed the win uh, on our last show in Tampa. Jenny's not easy. Like, She's no pushover. I wouldn't mess with. They Jenny. don't call her the Tennessee gangster for nothing. Yeah, man. you can't. You can't look over uh, Jenny. Um, yeah, she's quick. She's elusive. She's her boxing fundamentals are really on oh, par. Yeah. I did not think it was going to go like that, though. I did not think you know no. Britain really. She just turned it up, and I think she brought a lot of that animosity. You could hear it in the press conference. Oh yeah, she had some true, true bad blood with her, and she she took that and she ran with it into the ring. Oh yeah, man, she truly did. And then again, you look at the the third fight, Pearl Gonzalez, which I didn't talk about this on the chat there with um with Britt in the interview, but mm -hmm. I was talking to her before the fight. Uh, we we're in the same. Um, uh, shuttle bus together talking and, and she I said do you think she's just going to jab 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 she's like, oh yeah she goes she does that she's in trouble that's what I wanted to do mm. so she had her game plan going in she did not even sometimes you can tell when you look into someone's eyes when you're interviewing them before the fight or you're riding in a car and you can tell they're shaky they say they're not but you can kind of tell if mm -hmm. you really look not all the time but most times and she looked so relaxed so confident where I thought alright alright that's what she wants and then she stood up and, and she did the fight yeah. now that's a that's a fight you have to go and rewatch again. There was you can again, see the animosity, bad blood in the press conference, bad blood between them during the fight. Even after the fight, I thought there was going to be a rumble in the ring. I'm like, man, come on, not again. No, they, sure yeah, the bell would ring and they were still jaw jacking yeah. and stuff. Watch Great that fight, fight. bkfc.com. Uh, again, we have in just a couple minutes. They, they should be due up any time. We have the fight of the year. They're both going to come on at once. A lot of interesting questions to ask them. Made some more notes here. Let's see what else we're going to chat about today, Rob. Uh, excited about BKFC Jackson. Let's talk about that while we have a couple minutes. BKFC Jackson's coming up. Jackson, Mississippi. Of course, that is Saturday, January 29th. Mm -hmm. So we have a while to our next event. You can go back if it's you're just rematch. watching. You get get re mm -hmm. re reacquainted with a lot of BKFC, but the rematch. It's a big rematch. It's part two. Let's talk about Elvin that. Elvin Brito, Caleb Harris, man. Now, not only is it part two, but we've said this before. Elvin's fight IQ through the roof. Every time I speak with that guy, mm -hmm. I learn stuff that I didn't even know I needed to learn. He he has so many ways 
I mean, he was training. He helped train Lorenzo Hunt in Puerto Rico. He mm -hmm. trains people. Bare knuckle fighters go to Elvin to get help. So this is the yeah. guy who made him the one that bare knuckle fighters go to to become better he's fighters. He's a tactician, man. He's incredible. That guy is, he's, he loves it. Yeah, he's the professor. <laughs> I'm going to change his name to, to pro, the professor, be, man. The dude's IQ is off the chart, like you said, man. He's got, and he's got, aside from fighting, he's got the best laugh, out of the, the most infectious <laughs> laugh. If I'm at an arena, <laughs> I can hear him from miles such away. A great his guy. laugh. He's just a happy dude. He loves fighting. So that's, what do we, oh no, no, the Nog is here. If you're just oh tuning days. in, this is what I almost bought the other day for my wife. Now here's what I know about this. It has, it's made with real dairy cream. cream. Am I allowed to say this stuff on the podcast? No, nah, I okay. probably steer clear of that. So you know what's on, you know what's in this eggnog. <laughs> it's not the kind you get from, <laughs> nah, the, from you a catching grocery me store. Catching no eggnog. You want to try it? No, I Come gotta on, go gotta Christmas try shopping, man. Try it, dude, try no it. I'm going to try it. I hate no eggnog. chance. I'll try it. That's what's all it, you, brother. What's eggnog? I, I can't, well, there's all kinds it's of some uh, a couple of adult beverages. No, nah, it's some ad adult uh, alcoholic things. You am I allowed to say? Life, am I allowed to say the alcohol by volume on here? No, I don't know. Uh, it's I don't high. know. We're, it's high. I'm going to stumble. Probably flag us for 21 yet. plus now. Well, no one not, under 21. All right, then I'll turn it. I'm having Again, regular eggnog. I hate eggnog. Look at it. look how gross this looks when I pour it. Oh God, it's disgusting. Come on, Rob, take a shot. I'm good. Thank you. Be a man. I'm good. Put some hair on your chest. Here we go. Oof. I'm really afraid to try this. What did we even... You, you threw me, we were talking about Jackson. I'm trying this eggnog. Okay. Uh, looks like it's going to be a spoon. No fan. No fan. Is it made with... Yeah, that's Oof. disgusting. Just take a sip. No. <laughs> should he take a sip? I think he should. 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 Listen, I had one. But I'm good. I appreciate it, though. Uh, that's not my thing. Actually, I'll tell you, eggnog... I, it was I, I, with, That's not bad. And I don't think I like it. I must, yeah. My taste has changed. I don't know, but I'm still not going to buy it. Ugh. This is what I drank right here. Tiger Life keeps me going. All right. So let's talk back about Jackson before I get drunk and can't speak and I make my broadcast journalism career even worse. <laughs> uh, all right. So well, we talked about the main event. Which some is going to be great. Yeah, some, uh, another I only had one card. sip. I'm not that drunk. Come on. So <laughs> Jocelyn Jones. Yes. Martina Kroll. Former got UFC. A, yeah, we got, we got a chance to speak with her. I'm excited for her debut. I think Dude. she's going to make a lot of waves in the division. She, a lot of waves. She, I'll say this. When we spoke with her off the air, she is the most... Devin's going to try it. She is the most excited uh, mm -hmm. about coming that we've had anybody from UFC come over. She, she couldn't say enough about how she wants to challenge herself. I just spit on you, Rob. Sorry. It's okay. She <laughs> had to challenge herself and how she was looking forward to coming here. She's ready to go. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready to see her fight. I really am. We're looking forward to that. So there are two of the matches we have set up for BKFC Jackson. I've been in Mississippi, what, three or four times since I've been with the company. And mm -hmm. I always like the Mississippi crowd. They're a fun crowd to perform Ooh, in front of. They so are. They're awesome. They come out. They, they want to see some fighting. They want to see old school, just fisticuffs. And we Tickets got them are on BKFC. sale now for that. There right now. Where can they get them? BKFC.com? You can get them at BKFC.com. You can get everything at BKFC.com from tickets to pay-per-view. Merch. To learn more about your fighters to all the awesome merch like I'm rocking right here. Booyah. Look at these bad boys. Look at these bad boys. That's the wolf pack colors, if you know what's <laughs> up. Back in the day. Ooh, yeah, give it to me, baby. Creamy. All right. <laughs> so, well, okay, Evan's trying now. Evan, Evan just comes on and yells, creamy in my ear. I didn't like that, Evan. Uh, <laughs> Cash rules <laughs> everything around me. I didn't even eat yet today. Oh, right that's, on your... That's going right to the letter. Empty belly. I put mine on top of Tiger Life, so that's really gross. Come on, let's get a shot of Evan trying that eggnog. I want to see it. I Where's he at? Once. I don't want to oh, you, did you again. drink it? Yeah. The oh. boy, that, they saw it on the broadcast. Okay, good. <laughs> that was for Phil. Talk for Phil was was saying to do it. I love it. Well, there we go. We tried your eggnog. Um, other than that, waiting for the other two uh, to call in. And I know we had Joe Riggs scheduled for today. How are we doing, Joe Riggs? Any chance or is he busy training? Is training or sleeping in? <laughs> so I know I know Luis Palomino cannot you know, cannot join us today. Yeah, let's talk for, about Luis. Right. Why why he's not here? Yep. So he's actually feeding families in his home country of Peru. That's awesome. Yeah. What a champion, man. That guy's awesome. I said it a couple weeks ago when he... When he Inside and outside agreed. of the ring, man. We couldn't be prouder to have a guy like him as champ. Mm -hmm. uh, I said that a couple weeks ago when he retained the title. Uh, to do not only in the ring, like you said, outside the ring, mm -hmm. interviews, media obligations. He's a straight pro, always dressed in the nines when he comes mm -hmm. to the fights, carrying his title, loves fighting for BKFC. He actually, I don't know what it was, but he was saying last week to me when I spoke to him briefly, he was filming a movie. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah. That's so we have cool. to find out what that is, man. I don't yeah. know if he's... I mean, me, I might be like a walk, a passerby. He might have a real role. I don't know. Does <laughs> anyone know what Luis, Pal Luis Palomino is filming? What movie? I'd love to know that. I'll watch him. I watched a whole Portuguese Christmas movie last night by accident on Netflix. <laughs> Did you? I forget what it was called, but I thought it was an hour long. I think I put on to go to sleep. It was an hour and 41 minutes. It was overdubbed. And it was about this guy that was a groundhog day. He wakes up every day's Christmas. He doesn't remember. He's cheating on his wife one year. He wakes up with another woman. Mm -hmm. it, it's. I wish I could remember the name of it. It was 
bad, but I had to finish it. It's like a Portuguese <laughs> version of uh, Groundhog, Groundhog Day, Day, huh? But it's with Christmas. And it was the, the guy, if he had a mustache, he was cheating on his wife because his mistress liked mustaches. This is what I learned. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really, yeah, it's what I watched. Uh, I don't know. As we get ready to go to talk to, to these uh, wonderful fighters we have coming mm-hmm. up, let's review, in case you missed last week, some of the awards we had. We had Female Fighter of the Year, mm-hmm. Britton Hart. We had her on earlier. We had the Male Fighter of the Year, was we were just speaking of him, Luis Palomino, the baboon. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was contested a little bit. Let's get back to that it's on tough, social media. man. It's tough. Um, Lorenzo Hunt. That's Luis Palomino. It's, it's a toss-up. The two. It was it's neck and neck. Up. It was definitely neck and neck, and I would understand you picking either one. Uh, some of the other names I'm seeing on social media, I, I don't, I can't justify making them fighter of the year. Not that I didn't enjoy them. Hey man, take it up, take it up with the fans. Don't take it up with us. That drives <laughs> me crazy. Hey, look, take I, it up with the fan. Well, I, I don't know why we, um, w- why people were so. Well, I'm getting an echo in my ear, but I don't know why we're so mad that mm-hmm. they were the ones that voted. Look, we didn't vote. You voted. So if you're mad. I guess they'd be mad at themselves. I don't know. I don't know. Take All it right. out on your uh, fellow constituents. <laughs> Take it out on the bare knuckle community. We'll, we'll set up a fight against two people in the community if they're mad at each other. All right. Let, no, we won't. Let's go. Let's go. Virtual green room. They're both here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure, my privilege, my honor, quite frankly, to uh, talk to the fight of the year fight here. Fight of the year. Here Sagala we Starling. We have them on the line, the virtual green room. Oh, they're not. Okay. They're, they're not on, on this we're, screen. We're being turned. Okay. Oh, oh, well, there, they are. there they are. How you doing, guys? Congra- con- congratulations. Yeah. It's a lot better to be kind of featured like this rather than punching each other in the face, right? I mean, just to talk for once. <laughs> yeah. So here's what we we're going to... We look gonna... a lot better. We look a lot better than the last time we were around each other. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Definitely. I'll definitely say that. So we're going to do some stuff here. Since you're both on, I'm going to ask you guys questions about these fights. And, and you know, we want to hear from both of you. There's so much to get into. Congratulations, Fight of the Year. Uh, I, I think every time I've seen either one of you, I actually try to thank you for giving BKFC and the fans that fight because you left your heart and soul in the ring. And it was the way to start off Knuckle Mania. What a way to start off Knuckle Mania. The biggest fight we've ever had. You guys come out and do that, both debuting. Uh, let's go to Taylor first, who came out on top of that fight. Taylor, you had said to me on the air, off the air, and we spoke privately, that you had a lot of nerves going into that debut fight. And everyone loves your entrances where you're, you're singing, you're dancing, but you said you were very nervy walking down to a uh, fight, which is understandable, your debut. Speak on that a little bit. Absolutely. I mean, it's a bare knuckle fight and it is just new. Uh, the stage was so big. There was Paige Van Zant fighting. Like it was just a huge stage and huge platform for bare knuckle. And um, I had just lost a fight, a boxing match a few months before that. So it was kind of like, man, like I, I just want to win. I just want to win and I want to go out here and I want to really show people that I am who I say I am. And so, of course, like, that was a lot of pressure. And it's like, you don't know what to expect, Bare Knuckle. And I remember before the fight, so many people coming up to me that had fought Bare Knuckle. And they were like, oh, just wait for this. Or just wait for that. Or this is the worst part. And I was just like, oh, shit. Okay. Like, <laughs> all right, cool. So, it was, it was a lot. It was a lot. But it was so much fun. If I'm not nervous, something's wrong. I'm nervous before every fight. So, yeah, I've heard other professionals say it too. You get those, even if you're not like nervous where you're shaking, you get the butterflies, almost excitement nerves, and that's how you kind of know you're alive. Um, yeah, fight in front of a crowd. I mean, I think that would make it, anybody right? nervous. Yeah, heck yeah. Bare knuckle. And then, Charissa, I mean, I never spoke to you about that. Uh, it was your debut as well. I mean, you were in this fight. When you walked out, speak on your nerves. I mean, we just heard from Taylor. She was nervy. Were you? I'm actually the opposite. Um, I don't get nervous before a fight. I get more anxious. I just want to get in there and throw. So for me, um, the nerves come when I find the name of the opponent. Um, that's when I actually get a little bit of nerves. But after that, I'm like, it's just a really hard sparring match. So that's how I always think about it. Um, I'm just focused on getting in there and uh, having a fight. Now, I think it was you, Sharisa, that said that, uh, I believe when we were headed back to the airport, I think it was you, that you thought that you didn't throw enough punches. One of you two said that to me. You thought you didn't throw enough punches. You both threw like 200 and some punches. It was insane. Uh, did When you were in there during the fight, I mean, did you feel what this fight was becoming? Or was it afterwards you were like, wow, that could be fight of the year? Or did you ever think that? Honestly, for me, it was after. Like, I didn't think about it at all. I was just inside of a fight, and all I was thinking about was the person in front of me. I'm sure she was doing the same thing, you know? And so 
afterwards i didn't even think it was uh, that crazy of a fight i knew we were all bloody i've seen crazy matches but then i went back and watched it. i was like oh i get it now because you know when you're in the fight you're just thinking about what's going on and trying to yeah. get the better punches get you know beat your opponent but afterwards once you saw the outpouring of like what people were saying about the fight and just seeing it all over and even like the face, I, I figured something like that was going to happen. You know, it's bare knuckles. You're throwing with you're throwing with no gloves on. So I figured it was going to be cuts and blood. Um, before watching, before being in that fight and watching the fights that I did, I didn't see that much other than the low off one with mm -hmm. um, Jason Knight. Like yeah. that's the only fight where I saw it that crazy. Um, so I wasn't expecting that much, but it was it was cool. Yeah, it certainly was. And Taylor, I think it was you that told me that, or maybe both of you, but I know you told me this, that you were getting contacted by, it was like Tyson Fury. You're getting contacted by all these people and stuff about the fight that it was. Did you realize after the fight, like this fight, or did you have to rewatch it? Like, did you realize this could be fight of the year? I had to rewatch it too. I remember being in there and just being like, wow, this is like, it's not as bad as I thought it would be, but it sucks. And like, <laughs> I was like, I remember I went over to the corner, like every round I'm like, man, I'm not doing enough. I'm not doing enough. And then after the fight, I was like, God, that sucked. And my coach was just like, like he literally just goes like, look around you. And everyone's like standing and like screaming. And David Feldman was like, Oh my God. And I was just like, huh, really? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I just had no, like, it was just more like being in the fight. Like she said, like we were in the fight, we're doing what we can. Shit sucks. She's hitting me. I'm hitting her. And it was just like, you don't really have that concept of like what's going on around of you course. and you can't see from the outside. So no, you're in a war. You're in an absolute war. Um, so as you watched BKFC throughout the year, I know me, if I knew I was in a bang or like an amazing fight and people were talking about it, did you guys think about the year under words at all? We're like, oh man, now this fight could beat me. Yeah, that's what I'd be doing. I mean, did that ever occur to you that you would be fighting? I was like, I was like, okay, of course we had that awesome fight in February. Yeah, we have year. a whole year to like get through. And then I like, I, like we had so much, so many fights that were going to be happening that I was like, we'll see if by the end of the year, like who's going to top it. So it was cool for it to like, you still have that impression like by the end of the year. Yeah, and, I sure. on, and I fought on the lane uh, on the Wichita card and I was there in the crowd watching the lane versus Rickles. Um, yeah. And that was a crazy match too. So I was, I was the same as her. I didn't know if somebody was going to beat us. If not, it honestly was the last thing in my mind, but watching the lane and Rickles, I was like, man, they, they had a really great fight too. Yeah. It's a huge, it's a huge honor. I mean, with all the great fights we've had all year long. So, other than Tyson Fury, did anybody else contact you? Because this fight kind of went viral. Yeah, John Jones. Oh, there you go. Wow, Bones John Jones. John Jones hit me up. Actually, like a couple people, like some famous D, like just random uh, people from the UFC, like Ashley Evan Smith hit me up. And like, it was really cool. But John Jones, like me being from Albuquerque, uh, like living there for a long time, he hit me up and was like, I did not know that like you lived in Albuquerque and that's cool. And he just was like, that was awesome and a great performance. So yeah, and I didn't even know Tyson Fury like said anything until like two months later, and then I was like, <laughs> "Can't believe I missed that." <laughs> well, as long as he was talking, as long as they're talking, I think it was really cool. I mean, you're you're um, uh, not co-workers, but you're what's the word I'm looking for, Rob? The, the people, to get, yeah, to get praise of someone in the industry. What's the word? Your colleague. Thank you, Evan. Evan, I got to start taking that Omega stuff or whatever it's called, Alpha Brain. Alpha Brain. Yeah, I can't remember anything. So yeah, colleagues, thank you. That's my job to know words. Uh, so the other thing I want to ask you guys is I find that sometimes there was no hatred going into this fight that I could see or anything. Two guys, two women, excuse me, fighting each other. So uh, was there a special bond after this fight? When's the first time you guys spoke after the fight? Was it immediately after or how long? I mean, we spoke a little bit in the back room, but we haven't really talked much. Every once in a while, we'll message each other before a fight, say good luck. That's, I mean, pretty much it. I don't hate any opponent I go against. For me, I respect everybody who goes in the ring for me. So to me, this isn't personal. It's personal to me about fighting. That's about it. I will say this. Uh oh. Um, yeah, I've seen Teresa like fighting and stuff. I'm like, man, yeah, like good, like good luck. Because of course, I want to see her do good. Yeah. But I did see the other day she posted something. If we ran it back, that it wouldn't go to the judge's decision, and I agree, it wouldn't because I would finish you. So I'm like, cool, like let's run that one back. <laughs> I mean, please <laughs> So, so if 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 the fans demanded, if we get it signed, you guys would want to run that one back. 
Absolutely. Oh, definitely. I wouldn't mind seeing that. Me neither. I wouldn't mind do seeing it. that at all. Hey, let's get get Nate Shook on the phone. Yeah, Nate. we're trying to book cards today. <laughs> we're booking them all. Well, thank I mean, you. February is like what? It's not. It's not too far, but it's enough time. <laughs> She's ready to rock. I love it. Both of you <laughs> have been. Too. Why not? <laughs> okay, there we go. Both of you have been such a pleasure to uh, to promote to deal with throughout this whole year. Uh, congratulations on fight of the year. Uh, you guys, you really earned that, and I think it's cool that it. You had females in the mix. You don't always get this in other sports. We had, a, I think, the female divisions probably the best one we have, or one of the best ones we have. Absolutely. Uh, but congratulations to you. Whether we run it back or not, one day. Uh, I, I mean, we saw what we saw. That was amazing. So, it's fight of the night, <laughs> fight was, of the year. But <laughs> on on the biggest card of the year, it was like it was like a storyline. It was written. So, congratulations to both of you. Thank you for taking your time to come on with us today. Uh, it's always a pleasure to talk to you, and I'll give you a round of applause because that fight was a hell of a fight. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Bye, guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, guys. Go Bye enjoy Bailey. your Christmas tree. <laughs> All right, so wow. there you go, Brian. Did you see that? Booked another fight. Taylor's feisty, yeah, man. <laughs> Shoo. We might just we might we might have matchmaker yeah. uh, credentials here. I know. I don't know though. Taylor's, Does the fans want to see that? I, they probably do. But Drop. Let us know in the chat. Let us know in the yeah, chat. They're talking. And again, if you're on the app, remember you can hop on YouTube and go in the chat. But what, what I'm thinking though, Taylor really wants that strap. She really mm -hmm. wants that title. So I mean, it, I want to see the rematch. But and Taylor just said that essentially. But if I was her, I mean, don't you want to get involved in the title mix a little more? Maybe before you do that fight? I think she just likes <laughs> she fighting. To, yeah, maybe. Put someone in front of me and I will fight with them. I'll and watch that, it. That's, yeah, exactly. She's, I'll watch it. She's just game. I don't care who it is. Send the contract. And Sharice Segal, she's another one. She didn't even hesitate. Mm -hmm. I love Not it. Not at all. I love it. Yep. So may, maybe BKFC show booking fights over here. Get shook on the phone. <laughs> all right. So I don't know if Riggs is calling in today. I think he's got something going on. I mean, he's busy training for his next knockout of the year. Uh Let's talk about that before we go, though. I think we owe that because we thought we might have Riggs mm -hmm. on today. Knockout of the year. Joe Riggs, Melvin Gillard. Um, Do we have that queued up? Can we get that I, queued up? In I, a well, it, let's let them queue it up. We'll wait for you to queue it up. Mm -hmm. You have to queue it up. But but I want to I say this as we're uh, talking about it. There were some fans and uh, even people in this office that said that was knockout of the year. Um, I think the reason that got knockout of the year, there may have been, a, there, not may, there were mm -hmm. other knockouts that were more ferocious. Um, but I think... If you're looking at that, the presentation of this knockout, you can see it coming up. It looks like he knocks him out of... Look, that right there, he knocked him out of the ring, it looks like. Now, there was maybe a little push there, too, but he knocked him out of the ring, and I think, I Man, think people... Yeah, I think, see... Straight left, right down the pipe. Not saying it didn't hurt, and he didn't knock him out completely, but I think that's why the people that are complaining uh, about that, the ones you picked, the fans, the fans that are complaining about the ones the fans picked, it, it he won that because it looked... It was look. It was... Um, it, it, it's something that stood out. Sensationalized. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I can't get, do you get any words today. It's all it right, knocked man. him out of the, the squared mm -hmm. circle. So I think that's why I won. I mean, you had, the, what's it, Defiant Bryant, man. You had him in there. He, he could have taken it too. I know. Like, that was a sick <laughs> knockout. Uh, there were a lot of great knockouts. It was a very hard category. Congratulations to Joe Riggs. Uh, we love him. He yelled at me. He yelled at me one time after. He yelled at me right after uh, the Hector Lombard thing. That's always a fun clip. Why are you running? He said. <laughs> and I was scared. I was just out of there. But Joe Riggs, I'm glad he didn't knock me out. Congratulations yeah, to him. I'm looking forward to him back in the ring. And let's talk. Me too. I can't wait. I mean, he, he showed us a lot against Hector. And uh, even his last fight there with Melvin. I mean, that was quick. So Joe's ready to Way go. To come, that's, and that's what you need to do. Not who am I to say that. But talk about coming and stamping. You know, you come off a loss. Come back with a strong knockout. I mean, to put but you right back in the contention. With Riggs, that loss with Riggs to, it was a I think cut. It was, it, was a, it was debatable. Yeah, it wasn't even a. I had him winning the fight. That's I right. had him winning the fight. So while, while on the Very record, in the history so. books, it's a loss. Mm -hmm. It's a debatable loss. But him to come out and just take Gillard out like that. But 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 I'm gonna hold off on that because Lombard he really turned it on with Lorenzo Hunt in the later rounds. His gas tank just. You know, he filled it up and down the stretch, I had him winning those rounds. So if it went further, Lombard could have knocked him out. You never know, man. You never know with this game. It's crazy, crazy, crazy no, game can, we live in. It can end like that. It's yeah. quick. So let's talk. We'll talk a little more about the end of the year awards in a minute here. But I know if the truck's ready, we have uh, some fighters have been sending in holiday messages. Oh, cool. So I don't know who they're going to play. They okay. just kind of throw one in. So let's be surprised together awesome. if they have that ready. Let's check out some of the holiday messages. At least one here. 
What's up, my BKFC family? It's Yuli Monster, the record holder for the fastest knockout in combat sports history. I'm here to wish you guys a happy holidays. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and stay tuned for 2022. I got more knockouts coming, more big fights coming. Boom. As long as I'm not in front of one of those punches, you. the yeah, big man, fights. He's oh, awesome. Great I love stash, you. by the way. Yeah. I like the new look. Big, yeah. big shout out to the stash. Yeah, the stash is huge, man. I wonder if he's going to do the, the show thing where he does the iron. <laughs> I call it the iron chic. Yep. Yeah, and you know what? Let's let's. They're saying in my ear they're getting a lot of these coming in hot and heavy. So okay, why cool. don't we just run the the remainder? Because uh, I want to hear it from the fighters about yeah. this. is pretty cool. They're wishing us all Merry Christmas. Let's check this. What's going on, BKFC fans? I wish all of you guys out there a Merry Christmas. All I want from Santa this year is a dancing bear with a little bow on his head. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I don't know if they're... Okay, Josh, I have to say, I haven't seen Josh. Josh looks like he's in shape. Bro. Ah, he does, so man. The dancing bear he, he refers to is who? Talk, talk, talking about victory, man. What a knockout, dude. What a knockout over Shoemaker. Shoemaker. I agree. Whew. I agree. That Sam Shoemaker knockout. So he's talking about hey, Arnold Adams. On, that, KFC that's, fight fans. This is Mike Marine Richmond here. I know it's hard to tell with uh, the beard growing out and the long hair, but I just wanted to give a, uh, a big... Merry Christmas and a happy holiday and a happy new year right around the corner. I myself am looking forward to 2022 to get back in the BKFC ring and, and put on some more highlight reel finishes for you guys and, and hopefully you're excited to, to see me back in action as well. So uh, Merry Christmas, happy holidays, and we'll see you guys soon. I love the American flag. I'll say that. Uh, mm-hmm. Marine Mike Richmond. Uh, number two, I'll say I love him as a fighter. And I think that I think this guy is going to have a bang up year. I think he's going to do very well in BKFC this year. And I love the beard. I'm used to the mustache. He looked like he had a little yeah, white to him. Yeah, switching it up this year, man. Yeah, man, this is great. I think yeah. I think what he told me, Mike Richmond, is one time that he, uh, I think he grows the stash out for his, uh, for he grows the beard out and then he makes mm-hmm. the stash for when he fights. It's like his war look. I dig okay. it. That's cool. I dig it. So thank you. Uh, I don't know. I don't think we have any else. Thank you to all the fighters that have been sending stuff into mm-hmm. us. We really appreciate it. We wish them a Merry Christmas. And it's cool because uh, they reach out to us. They send us these videos and they're like, we just want to thank the fans. We want to just know that not only the suits here at BKFC, not only Rob and I too, because mm-hmm. we're definitely not suits uh, and, and the fighters, everybody, we're kind of a family here and we all, it's nice that they're able to wish happy holidays. It's not like they're just doing it because we're making them. You see that? Like, mm-hmm. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Am I done? Did I do that correctly? No. It, it's coming from their hearts, and they love fighting in front of you. And that's one of the things I love talking uh, to fighters about when I'm interviewing them, you know, when we're off the mic. I talk to them about their love of the fans, what what it's like to go to war in front of the fans sometimes. And they really, really love the fans. As do we. That's why we try to be transparent on the show and try to tell you if there's like an upheaval online. We try to tell you what's really going on. Rob and I, as much as we know, we let you know. Absolutely. Uh, there's no secrets here. So I love that. I love that a lot. And I love the fact that we're getting ready to go to BKFC in Jackson. Excited for that. January 29th, BKFC.com. And I also love the fact that we talked about this earlier. This guy, the baboon. Luis Palomino, one of our champions, we're proud to call a champion, feeding uh, tons of families, hundreds mm-hmm. of families in Peru right now where he's from. And uh, let's let's roll a video of him. Let's check him out and see the male fighter of the year. I love his, I love his ring entrances. They're always top notch. They're the it, best, man. They're, they're the best. Fights. His fights are incredible. So you got great ring entrances, mm-hmm. great interviews, great fights. BKFC superstar Luis Palomino, male fighter of the year. Uh, again, we said it was Lorenzo Hunt, Luis, but Luis takes it. Fans picked it, brother. Is that our playout music? Are we I done? Think that's End it, it, man. They're telling us to shut up. All right. Hey, thanks so much. Merry Christmas to you and your family. We appreciate you, Rob. Drink this eggnog on the way out. I'll drink a Tiger Life. I'll say Merry Christmas. Knuckle up. We love like, you guys. comment, subscribe. Ah!